Oh, well, that's that. But you see, so that's what? what I'm talking about. You're hiding information from me. Let's if go. My young 15 year- okay, so Rob versus Dan. Let's see how it goes. Um, this is 31 minutes. And it's titled The Most Heated Debate We've Ever Had. I think it's on child care because I kind of snuck a peek. Let's see, though, okay? Papa Gut, he told me this is a pretty spicy one. So let's see if it's really spicy. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go full force. If Papa Gut b- ends, burns our bridge, if he ends my friendship with him over this video, he don't i i will cry <laughs> okay don't ask me to comment on a video and then expect me not to go hard on you bro nah nah he's good he's good he's good sport he'll like it okay ready let's go ahead set us up baby okay so as you all know we are very obsessed with disney and so i am in See? like a, yeah same i have a disney tattoo sad but there it is they've used me as a billboard and i'm 100 percent uh, a free billboard for them. That's you. I'm in a, like a million and one Disney groups on Facebook. And mm. there's one Facebook group I'm a part of where we talk. Um, people like just ask advice and stuff like that about the parks. Um, okay. And everybody just like. I've been to Disneyland probably like a thousand times. Legit though. I used to go like every day for years because I had a pass. And when I was a grown up, that's like the first thing we did was get a pass. I actually just went this last May with a homie to celebrate our 12 year anniversary. So fun. So great. I can't even complain. I loved it. Shares information with <clears throat> each other. Okay. Um. So this post um, I saw a couple of weeks ago, I like I saw really early in the morning and I got so angry that I started screenshotting it. I was like, I'm going to show this to my husband. Yeah. So we censored um, the names and stuff. So Yeah. Mm, and nice. then I was telling him about it, and we started arguing about it in the car. So we thought it would definitely Did be. Did we start arguing? Yes. Oh. Oh. Okay. I didn't even know. We, oh, we're having. We're about to fight. Let's, yes. get, let's get ready All to right. fight, guys. So this is a mother who posted on the group. Let's talk deluxe resorts. We've gone the last three years in a row, and my son is now 15, but my daughter is six. My son only agrees to go if we stay deluxe, like Polynesian or Contemporary Resort. Convince me why these might be better. So here's my perspective. Is that kids entitled? What I said was like, okay, now you go to the deluxe resort and you leave your 15-year-old home. Let's talk. Oh, God, Brittany. Let's talk. Why do I have dyslexia? Let's talk deluxe resorts. We've gone last three years in a row. My son is now 15, but my daughter is six. My son only agrees to go if we stay deluxe like Polynesian or contemporary resort. Convince me why these might be better. Tell him to pay for it if he wants to choose. Um. Okay. <clears throat> why why roll your eyes? This is an entitled behavior from a 15-year-old. If he had said, uh, Mommy, Daddy, can we please stay in the luxury? That's fine. But he's saying mm-hmm. he's only going to go if it's he's in a deluxe resort. That's entitled behavior. Is he paying for himself? Oh, my God. See, mm-hmm. this is why he's the reason why I screenshotted all this. You why? sound like all the people in the comments, which we have screenshots of, where I'm screenshotting them. I'm like, you're a piece of shit. You're a piece why? of shit. Why? How are they? How, because, what is wrong with that? calm down. Like, who cares? He's gone for three years in a row, and he's like, I'm only going if we stay at a deluxe hotel. Like, okay, so let me see, like, if the de- deluxe hotels are actually worth something, and then we'll all go. Or if he doesn't want to go, he doesn't have to go. Mm. Why is it that? Okay, hold on initial opinions hmm. I grew up in a pretty humble attitude family I'm not gonna lie sometimes my mom would like plan elaborate like beach days and stuff and all of us would decide like I don't really want to go and we wouldn't go and it would bum her out for sure like my mom and dad made like an effort to try to take us places because they had 10 kids and it was really hard to afford to take us a lot of places. And um, I think there were times we weren't appreciative and we were like rebellious teenagers. And I think we all were really pretty embarrassed about our actions at that time. I think we were really obnoxious. But generally speaking, like if you're like, I remember when I had a church event, uh, my parents had a raffle. And my parents won this raffle and we got a, a deluxe hotel room in San Diego 
and we fit all of our kids in one space. Like my parents got the bed because we're kids, we don't care. And they're old and like, I'm gonna put my parents on the floor. And then the kids all slept on the floor, like a big sleepover. It was so fun. And we all just slept together and none of us complained. We just thought it was cool. We got to go to San Diego and sleep on the beach because like we got this like just Lux resort, like raffle thing, okay? So for us and my family, I think my siblings and I are just like happy to be there. We're just like happy to be in the room. Um, and at the same time, if I'm hearing it in a very specific tone, then I'm okay also leaving the teenager behind. But I do think that I'm assuming he said it in more of a bratty way. And I'm not sure that I'm okay with that attitude. And I'm also not sure that I would want to raise a kid that would react that way. I think that's the issue is that I wouldn't want to re I wouldn't want a kid that wouldn't want to go if it wasn't quote unquote the fancy hotel. I feel like that's pretty weird. So it's Robin Dan. So it's Robin, right? I think Mama Gut's name is Robin and then Dan. So Robin Dan, right? Am I right on that? Oh my God, somebody please correct me if I'm wrong. And so, because I always mix up names like in my head unless I say it a thousand times. But yeah, right? It's, it's not Danielle and Rob, is it? Wait, is it Danielle and Rob? What's Papa Gut's name? Because I always forget. Oh my God, he's going to make fun of me for this. I'm so bad with names. I still forget what his name is. Is it Rob or is it Dan? <gasps> oh my God, now he's going to burn the bridge. Our friendship's going to be over. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> if it's okay. Oh my God, he's going to burn the bridge. Okay, well, there it goes with that friendship. He's literally told me this like seven times. Oh, my God. Anyways, love them both. <laughs> oh my God. Something to get that press about and then start. <laughs> okay, wait, let me read your comments. Let me read your comments. People feel like he's definitely a brat. Um, tone of voice and body language is everything. Yeah, I want to know. I want to hear it, though. Um, he don't have to go. Let him stay. He's grown. He can look after himself. When they're gone, I don't understand. It sounds like he's trying to get out of it. Ooh, is he trying to get out of it? Is he trying to get out of it? Is he trying to get out of it? If he's trying to get out of it, let him get out of it. You know what I mean? But I don't know why he has to like create an elaborate story. Can you just say I don't want to go? Also, do y'all leave your 15 and 16 year olds at home? Are we leaving our 16 year olds at home? I guess so, right? Stowe says initial opinion. It depends on how he said it. If he said it like he was entitled, don't bring him. If he said it like, hey, I probs, uh only want to go if it's deluxe, then mama got, mama got is right. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm assuming they didn't just go to Disneyland. They went as a as a trip, right? So like your minor child is at home for like a week at a time while you're gone. That's interesting to me. I don't think my parents have ever done that. Not without an older legal sibling at home. Just because like legally things could go wrong. But I guess a 16-year-old is legal to leave at home. I guess so. I don't know, guys. I don't, I, I don't, you know, I grew up with 10 siblings. I was, or nine siblings. I was never alone. I was just never alone for more than a few days. So, yeah. But also, we didn't want to be alone very much. So, like, it didn't matter. But, yeah, interesting. Okay, let's keep going. Like, attacking this mother and her kid. Like, oh, your kid's such is, a piece of who, shit. Who am I? I'm not attacking the mother. I'm saying the kid isn't, like, the kids are entitled. Literally, as you get older, you become more of a human being. Kids are like little selfish True. They steal your food. This isn't a criticism of the mother, but this kid, uh, maybe maybe I'm assigning a, 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 an inflection to it. Right? Maybe he's not the terrible. Maybe he's like, yeah, maybe his I was like, yeah, I don't really want to go unless we stay in like a really nice hotel. Uh, and I'm fine with not going. If he if that, like he's a 15 year old boy who has been to Disney three years in a row. Okay, so if his if his if your what are you what are you, what are how are you interpreting this? Because I'm interpreting this as like I'm not gonna go unless you give me this. That's how I'm interpreting this. I'm interpreting it as like I'm only going if we stay at one of the deluxe hotels. But like what? Because like you think that he's already over. It? He's like I've been here three years in a row. Like I don't really care. I don't really want to go unless. Yeah, it's and like a 15 year old boy with a six year old girl. Like Disney's different. Okay, I could see that. I could see a teenager wanting to do something else with his homies, maybe. A 15-year-old instead of, sorry, I was saying 16-year-old earlier. Thanks for the correction. So, like, yeah, maybe I was, maybe I could imagine him saying, like, oh, you guys go to Disney for the week or three days. I assume if they're getting a hotel, they got to be going for a few days, right? They, you, no one gets a hotel to go to Disney for the day. So, like, he's obviously going to be left for a few days. And they're looking at the resorts. So, like, okay, they're going to be gone a while. So... Yeah, okay, wait, I'm seeing, okay, hold on, let me get more comfy here, okay, 
Okay, I'm seeing something here. Okay, so I could see that he wants to do something else. But again, the way he said it does piss me off. I think I'm with Papa Gut on this. Something, I'm, the way he said it does piss me off, right? We're like, um, uh, there's something about that that makes me mad. My son only agrees to go if we stay. Because that's the thing. If he's willing to go, if they stay at the right hotel, then he's willing to go. But is he going for the hotel or is he going for Disney? You know what I mean? Like, Bryson says, if anything, he's like me and wants to stay home, jerk off and play video games and hang out with his homies. Yeah. So that's fair too, right? That's totally fair. Maybe it's just the way that it was communicated. But yes, when I initially read it, I assumed he was spoiled. He's gone for three years in a row. You know, like he's probably over it. I only want to stay at deluxe hotels too. Yeah, but you know, yeah, but you're my you're my brat wife. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna go through the comments. Okay, but now. I, I get what you're saying. I'm coming from the place where the hold on, <sighs> hold on. You're coming from the place where like this kid's been here three years in a row. He's seen a lot of it. He doesn't necessarily care, and he doesn't really want to go with a six year old because that could be a lot of energy. And he's like, you know what? I only really want to go if it's a really nice hotel because I'm gonna stay home and masturbate while you go to Disney or something. Oh. Huh? There's the masturbation comment. There we go. Bryson, you were right. Oh, I mean, maybe. I mean, I used to. Maybe. Like him. I still. OK. Anyway. OK. I get it. For me, I'm, I'm seeing this more as like a power play. And he's a young boy, too. So it's like a little different. Because young boys are they're digging. OK. So it's a, to me, it's a power play. That's my thing, though. But if he was being bratty and he was like, I'm only going if you go to deluxe hotel. Then I would just ground him while I went to Disneyland for being a brat. Like, a part of me wants to ground him. But a part of me, again, just doesn't want to raise a kid that's really bratty. I just want to raise a kid who's like, hey, mom, I want to stay home and masturbate. I'm like, cool. Don't tell me that. But also, good for you, honey. We're sex positive. Like, okay. Like, thank you, TMI. But also, okay. Like, I just want to raise a kid in an environment where they could just be like, hey, I don't want to go to Disneyland. But also, if you go to Deluxe Hotel, I might go because I want to vlog it. Oh, and this is what we're going to get into with the energy of the comments. Like, okay. if it is a power play from him, like, why are you having yeah. a power struggle meeting that True. power? Do you, do you, do you, is you, it's so interesting that, like, when we first, when I first gave my perspective <clears throat> on this, I didn't even know we were fighting. And apparently we were fighting. Yeah, because I think you're wrong. Yeah, I know, but I That's didn't know. Why we're but I didn't even know you disagreed with me when you brought this up last week. <laughs> because, like, by you, like, by you responding to the situation that way, like, makes him, um, what word did you use? I don't know. <laughs> what word did I what use? What do you describe him as? I don't know. You think he is... He's going for a power play. You said something Entitled. Else. Entitled. Yeah. You're making him entitled mm. by having that energy. I don't think you can be not entitled with the way the story is told. Like, if you're just reading it for the story itself, I don't think it's not entitled, right? Am I wrong here? Let's see. My son only agrees to go if we stay at the dislock... Dil oh, my if we stay at the deluxe, like Polynesian or contemporary resort, <clears throat> convince me that these might be better. Why these might be better. I, I, uh, that's hard for me not to read that as entitlement, but also, yeah, because like, how are you re like, it's, just the statement alone does come from a place of. Maybe it's a take it or leave it. Maybe he's like a California kid like I am and who grew up near Disneyland. So we're like, eh, we could go or not go. Let's say, oh, like, little girl, I go every time. Okay. Like, I never say no to Disneyland. But it is one of those things. It is, um, yeah, maybe it's like, a, I don't know. There's something in the way that the story is already told in the small paragraph that does make me think it's entitled. Okay. <clears throat> so you, you're saying him. that the 15-year-old doesn't realize he's being entitled and by me acknowledging that he's becoming more entitled. Yeah, probably. What do you mean? Fifteen year olds are old enough to know and well and so decently. Yes, but I don't think that like under whatever. That's besides the okay, point. Okay, we're assigning we're assigning a value here that we <clears throat> was this place Disneyland or Disney World? I don't know. We may not. We were speculating on a value. Anyway, this says tell him to pay for it if he wants to choose. Have an uh, an uh, an input. Awesome. Have a favorite. Awesome. Have an ultimatum. Uh, ultimatum. Ha. <laughs> Hope you're chipping in on the cost support. I agree. Makes sense. Tell him to pay for it if he wants to choose. Have him put awesome. Have a favorite awesome. The ultimatum. Ha. Huh. Hope you're chipping in on the cost sport. <clears throat> so again, is the consequence he doesn't want to go, but she can't leave him at home for a week. Because Okay. So a lot of you are saying I wouldn't leave my 16-year-old, 15-year-old at home for a week either. So that's the thing. Because if it's Disney World, they're going for like a week. If it's Disneyland, they're probably going to four to six days. So the question is, 
if you're going to this resort, because you're going for a long time, I'm assuming, maybe it will come up in the comments, right? How long can you literally leave a 15 year old at home alone unsupervised and not blame yourself if they burn down the house? Because you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I'm just, again, I'm like, because like maybe they can't leave it at, leave him at home. Maybe they can't leave him at home. And that's why it's so it's coming off as entitled to us because we're assuming he's not going to be left at home. Like, oh, I'm not going if it's not what I want. And it's like, okay, well, you don't have a choice. You have to come. So. Yeah, if you want to listen, <clears throat> I was a brat when I was younger. And that's the response you give kids like, oh, buy it yourself. Oh, I don't want to eat this for dinner. Go, 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 go buy whatever you want. Oh, well, it don't work. It's entitled behavior. All right, go I'm, not to saying, the I'm not saying slide. the kid is a horrible person. Oh my gosh, Dis uh, Seven said Disney Europe. Let me tell you, I'm gonna go to Disney, Paris, Paris, Disney. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, I already told myself. It's my gift to myself next year. It's my gift to myself. Thank you, me. Kids can be entitled, I'm just saying. That one we're not reading. Why? Because it doesn't. Oh, it's She's just giving advice about a resort. Oh, okay. What an idiot. Oh, and by the way, Yaya says, I think it's hard not to see it as entitled when you grew up not having the option to go to Disneyland. How about this? I never had the option to go to the resorts. I've never been to a Disneyland, like, like, um, hotel resort. Like, I've never been to, like, the fancier part ever. So, like, again, I've always wanted to stay at, like, a Disneyland hotel, but they're so expensive. Even, like, even if I did travel in, we would have gotten the cheapest hotel possible. So, if I was given a chance to stay at a Disney hotel, like, that would be amazing. But at 15, maybe he's just rebelling. Maybe he's like, that's not cool. I'm a boy and I have friends. Though Disneyland is pretty boy-friendly now. So, I wonder. Yeah, typical woman, right? <clears throat> so, then this Hold is... On. Just making sure that we... Okay, this is the second one. All right. So, this person... Make sure he, this is how, I'm going to read it how I read it, okay? Make sure uh, he understands the house rules and the required adherence to them while you guys are away. No parties, grandmas in charge, houses oh, to be clean. He'd be staying with his grandma. Okay. Clean, grasses to be mowed. He is to check in via FaceTime at least three times per day. Okay, now slow down there, tiger. I wouldn't even have him check in. Like, if there's a, if there's an adult at home with him, like, I would even have him check in. Like, check in, like, every three days i guess like to say hi i guess but like why check in your kids don't like you that's how i feel <laughs> i mean that seems a little intense you don't i i just and it's like why like comment it like if you are so like angry like i understand being like listen like i wouldn't i would tell him to stay home well for, for... but this is like too much well... you're getting off on overpowering kids that i agree with you be only because if in my worldview he wants to go, but he's playing the power play game, it's enough of a punishment to just not take him. Mm. Frankly, get the deluxe resort and don't take him. That's the punishment. I anyway. think that that's really shitty. Oh, I'm so sorry. If he, if it is because he's playing in the entitled mm. game, I don't know. If we, if it was our kid and we told, we, we could tell that he just didn't want to go because like he's like, yeah, I just don't really want to go, but I would go if it was uh, the Polynesian. That's different. Then I would just say, like, okay, like, we're going to have you stay home. We're not going to splurge for that. And that's okay. You know? Yeah. But if it's from what I'm interpreting it as is mm. that it's a power play, <laughs> then, like, yeah, we're going to get the nice hotel and you're not coming. But, like, this is, like, a little overkill. It's that, like, it's that seems, like, See, a but really if you aggressive. did something like that, like, I would understand why, like, your kids would no longer talk to oh, you. And yeah, I would be course. okay with that. Okay. All right. I'll so this is about – I'm going to be very serious now. This is about values. I don't want to raise a kid that's entitled. An entitlement doesn't get a reward. I'm sorry. You do not get a trophy for being entitled. I'm sorry. You want to raise boys who don't pressure women into... You want to raise boys who don't, you know, push the boundaries? You want to raise boys that aren't entitled? Don't let them be entitled. We wonder... Like, I remember my nephew. He was six, six at the time, I think. <clears throat> Auntie Brittany, Auntie Brittany, Auntie Brittany, Auntie Brittany. And I was like, oh. and I was like, hey, bro. He goes, yeah, I was like, Auntie Brittany needs 10 minutes to recharge her spoons. And I want to answer these questions for you, but I do not have the energy. Can you give me 10 minutes? And he goes, okay, Auntie Brittany. And he goes and sits down and plays his game for 10 minutes. My mom goes, why did you do that? And I go, do what? And she goes, he's six years old. And I was like, oh, and you want to know? What, what do you want me to do? Even though I'm tired and exhausted, I've already answered 100 questions. You want me to keep going? And she goes, she goes, but he's six years old. And I go, cool. Now is the time to start training him to not push his 
fuck, not to pressure women into doing things they don't want to do, and to tell him that consent matters and he needs to give people space. I explained to him what the problem was. It wasn't him. It was Auntie Brittany. I need rest. And he can wait 10 minutes. And did he wait 10 minutes? He did. I'm not going to raise, even by proxy, entitled children. Okay. But I do think no matter how good of a parent you are, your children will go through a rebellious stage of resenting you. So there's also that. But I will say, yes, I want to instill consent into my children or into the children of the world. Okay. Boundaries. Right. But I do think that it can come off harsh to some people because, oh, they're kids and blah, 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 blah. I get it. Okay. But there's a relationship to be had with boundaries here. Okay. If the kid is 15 and he was like, fuck you, you're poor. I hate you. Die in a ditch unless you get me my hotel room. That kid ain't going to Disneyland. That kid is staying home and mowing the lawn. That kid is going through some retraining to be a human being. No. Okay. No. But if that kid is like, hey, I really don't want to go, bro. Cool. Stay home. Love you. Don't kill. Don't like set the house on fire. Peace. Okay. It's so, it's so contextual. We need to know the context of this situation. You know what I mean? Like consent should be talked about, but there are entitled teenagers in the world and I am not going to reward that behavior. Boys or girls. abso freaking luli not. Do you know how many cases of mothers have protected their boys from the assaults they've committed how many cases of mothers have have protected their daughters from false accusations how many cases of mothers okay because fathers are absent often absent but mothers who are involved are the reason their kids get away with so many f crimes that's like petty behavior yes i think that should okay don't be petty be reasonable don't be petty be reasonable don't be petty Teach a lesson about values. Really? To be a petty parent? I think it's shit for your kid to feel that despite that they're not working or earning anything and that their entire existence up until this point is solely because of the parent's existence, that they shouldn't act like entitled brats. Like if my kid, like that's, again, if, if my kid is doing it as like a power play, like, okay, f you. Because they're not expecting you to say no. They're expecting to get what they want because they're a brat. And so like, okay, no, you're, you're staying home. I'm going to get, and I'm going to do this. We're going to go and you're not coming because you're, you're, you're a brat. I just don't like that. <laughs> okay. I, I don't want the pettiness, right? Like, I don't want to be in competition with my kid. I want it just to be like, Hey, like, let's have a conversation about the why. Like, I would love to ask this kid, like, why don't you want to go to Disneyland? Is it really over the hotel room? Cool. You don't have to go, but like, and you can have fun with your friends for sure. Like if he's like, look, I really want to go, but I don't want to stay in a hotel like and share one bed and not have my own space. Okay, third option. I'm sorry. I was doing it in my head, but let me do it. Okay, so third option. The kid is neither entitled, like he's not throwing a bitch fit, he, and he's not just trying to hang out with his homies. He's genuinely like, hey, I don't want to stay in a motel and have to share a bed with my sister. I don't want to have to like not have my own space. I don't want to have like, you know what I mean? I want to be able to um like be comfortable for this vacation week then that's fair okay well good thing we're raising our kids together i'm sure we'll have more robust conversations yeah not that them. way sure listen you asked me if i was in soul a soul charge okay that's what we're talking about all right next one <clears throat> you want to read it or want me to um this is no. so weird to me. My kids and nieces and nephews have grown up going to Disney since they were very little. They're now adults, some of uh, with their own kids. They all wanted to go to Disney even during the teenage years, and we're happy with whatever. Just being with the whole family was a reason enough. We've always stayed on property, and we stay, uh, stayed deluxe, but mostly moderate. They didn't care. We were at Disney on vacation together. When you say he only agrees to go if you say deluxe, right? Really? Wow. Oh, and there was a 10-year age gap from the youngest to the oldest to our group of the kids, and they all loved being together. Just weird. Hot take. Not everybody wants to be with their family all the time. And uh, Disney true. might not be the best place on earth to everybody, especially when you go three true. years in a row. Yeah, I guess. True. I mean, again, it's just you... like it's so weird. This is the thing that I hate about these Disney groups. These okay. people are so weird and entitled about like going to a place where you spend all your money and cry over people dressed up in costumes. That's what blows my mind. I love going to Disney. I really do. I can't wait to go in November. Like, I, it act Okay. So, um, my partner just wanted to like give input 
he he actually made a good point that I didn't think about. Um, he said, what if the kid wants to go to the resort so he can actually meet friends versus if they stay at a regular hotel room, he won't be able to make friends, which is true. But if they stay at the resort, then he can meet other teenagers to hang out with <clears throat> instead of doing Disney with his six-year-old sister and his parents, which might be lame. So maybe he's like in that kind of a situation, right? What do we think about that? Actually makes me upset of how long we have to go. But the way that these people like are like, weird bro <laughs> well, it's I, weird i mean i think that was a nice sentiment that they had said like hey it's about being together with your family if again if your argument is just that he's desensitized to disney he doesn't really want to go unless he can jerk off in the deluxe host that's fine but um you know i listen if it's the way i it, see this is your best friend now leave him home and take your daughter to a deluxe resort and live it up oh thousand percent why spend extra money to drag him along when he's already so ungrateful about it thousand percent hundred percent million percent true why are you so angry? i think that makes you such a to think that well, how it, what, it, what, I, what do you what do you mean in the in my view that he's being entitled if that is correct how am i wrong for proving to my kid that you shouldn't be an entitled you going away and having a vacation whatever regular vacation we we're gonna mm -hmm. have and not taking them and them staying home like is enough to show that leave him alone wait leave him home wait leave him home and take your daughter to deluxe leave it and live it up why spend the extra money to drag him along when he's already ungrateful about it yeah if he's ungrateful right like if he's ungrateful if maybe man it's like maybe God, i wish we had more details you're not going to bend on their demand if it is a demand <laughs> i think that you going okay. beyond and like booking a deluxe resort and going like as much as you can to shove it in their face yeah. that's what makes you yeah good listen <laughs> i get what you're saying but no but th this is this is the problem okay so we're going to assume that it's my behavior that i'm right about the, the situation you could be right but like we're, that's what we're arguing right that he is entitled he's saying boom i will only go to disney if you do this for me and you're saying just saying well we're not going to do that for you you could stay home and just doing that that's you're saying that that's the appropriate response right yes that's a neutral response he needs to be punished for having an entitled perspective on the world. Ooh. Mm. <sighs> okay. Is this one of those situations where, like, you make your kids work at, like, a senior citizen retirement home to make them realize their life is good? Like, is you know what I mean? Like, is this, is this a, like, a 90s response of, like, oh, my kid is entitled, so I'm going to make him work with the poor <laughs> so he knows like you know what i'm saying like is that is that you know what i mean like what is uh that's the thing is like i don't i don't really believe in punishment because it doesn't work i'm trying to be very progressive about this punishment doesn't seem to work it doesn't work in prisons it doesn't seem to work with children so i would argue that the child doesn't need to be punished the child needs to have a different contextualization of the situation to hopefully enlighten his perspective to me a be a, a pattern of behavior of entitlement with oh, i'm only going to do this thing if you do this for me imagine he said something like that at a fucking job unemployed he has a perspective that's going to get his ass kicked he's going to turn 20 years old or 18 he's going to get a job he's going to act like an entitled fuck and he's going to fail in the world because we let him have mm. entitled baby f behavior mm. and didn't punish him enough so now he needs it's not that okay i agree with the premise of we don't want to raise entitled bitches i agree i just don't think punishment works based off of all the studies that i've seen i think recontextualizing the situation seems to work better but then i don't have kids though it does seem to help with my brother because when my brother who grew up catholic and corporal punishment because my parents not great we were hit a lot not great and frankly it went too far sometimes okay just too far my brother tried to be better than my father and mother but one time i think he went a little bit mm, too too far so i sat him down i said look as your older sister i love you don't repeat patterns that we grew up with he goes i'm not i'm like literally better i was like you are better but instead of being five percent better i want you to be like 50 to 80 percent better i'm not asking for perfect but i do think that your child is specifically so intelligent but still a child and so you keep forgetting that he's a kid because he's so smart. But the problem is like he's only smart 
in relation to his age. He is not smart like an adult. And so you need to reason with him. And I don't think you need to be spanking him. And so we had a conversation about it. And they 100%, they still spank because I think, I think they still spank. I have to ask them. But they brought it down like 80%. They like literally eradicated like so much of it. So grateful. Breaking generational curses take time. But like I'm not going to hit my kids if I have kids. Probably not going to have kids. But I'm not going to hit my kids. Sorry. I just don't think it works on this bull. When I nannied professionally, I always told the no nanny parents, I'm not going to hit your kids. I don't want to hit kids. I feel like it comes out of anger and I don't want to do it. And I never had to. Never had to hit a kid. I just used my I just used my voice. Like I would come over to do like, let's say if it wasn't the full-time gig, I'd come over to do date nights. And they'd be like, Brittany, he won't sit down to let me change his diaper. And I'd be like, name. I'd be like, Frederick. He'd be like, I'd be like, sit down. I'm going to change your diaper. And he'd be like, oh. And he would sit down for me. It was about power of the, en like, your energy, bros. Okay? I just feel like hitting, punishing, not the right vibe. But I understand the, the instinct because I have the instinct to be like, mm, I ain't going to raise no entitled kid. But punishing doesn't seem to work. Recontextualizing the situation, I think, is better for them. He needs to learn that his actions have consequences. He's staying home. He can eat whatever he mm -hmm. wants. He still has his freedom to stay home. But he has to learn that like he, like we're not gonna say like you can only eat 500 calories a day and you better mow the lawn and cut the grass and f <coughs> you have to eat only broccoli. Like it's just like, you're gonna stay home and we're gonna enjoy ourselves and like we're not gonna adhere to your demand. We're not gonna beat the kid. We're not hurt, hurting, he's not gonna be locked in a dungeon. We're gonna have like a chaperone stay there or he'll stay with grandma or something. Um, and then he'll be fine. He's not going to be miserable, but he will understand that he's going to get the punishment of not getting what he wants, and we're going to get what he wanted because you're not going to be an entitled fuck. You know, I think that you're just teaching your kid that you're an. How? Yes, I will. I am an. If you're going to act entitled, yes. Very boy response. I respect the toxic masculinity, but at the same time, I do feel like it's a little bit outdated. Yeah, but I feel like you're like an doesn't deserve to be respected why because why why because you're just doing something to be an go on your regular disney oh, vacation I'm and then no, come I'm home not. and that's no, when you start to implement I'm like changing not. behavior uh, yeah like fine like if you don't want to come like we're not going to stay at a disney resort so you're not going to come however i find that you were being demanding and i don't find that respectful these are the reasons why this is disrespectful if you want to put demands on us like setting a deluxe <laughs> resort then then that's something you're going to have to contribute to and maybe these are the ways around the house that you could start contributing to more things and then maybe next time we go on a vacation we'll be able to do something a little bit more fancy but i just need to remind you again that what you're doing is disrespectful and i don't appreciate when you demand things from me when we're just trying to do a nice family thing i will say i could be wrong and oh my god please like <laughs> i'm gonna get my bur bur bridge burned again i feel like i could be wrong that robin is a little bit sensitive to the issue just like a little bit because i do feel like this is a values thing are we raising little kids to be a little like to be functional adults and if we are, we have to understand that like teenagers are rebellious. They will go through an I hate you stage no matter how great of a parent you are. If they're stunted in their teenhood, it might come out in their 20s or 30s like it did for some of my friends. Oh, my God. Thank God I was like rebellious as a teenager. So I never had that like happen in my 20s and 30s. But some of my friends had their teenage rebellion stage in their 30s because they were like 4.0 students and did college and were like super mature, mature for their age. So they never lashed out until they were older. It was insane. So be grateful your kid is being a brat at 15 and hope that he breaks the cycle by the time he's an adult. But it is one of those things where I feel like there's a little bit of sensitivity on her end and a little bit of reaction on his end. And I feel like the answer is a combination of both of them. They, they're both right. I think they need to take their ideas and mush them together because they're both the right ideas, right? Give repercussions that are within reason and be kind and compassionate to the fact that this is a teenager and they're going to have a different relationship with the whole situation, right? So what you're so which do you think is better, that or being like, ha ha, you stupid bitch, you could stay <laughs> fucking home with grandma and I'm going to go to the best hotel in the world. Well, it's not like grandma is a horrible person. Which sounds better than Listen. Lakara says sometimes parents have to be to their kids. You're not their friend. You're their parent first. Okay. I agree with that premise. I don't think you should be friends with your kids. But I think to be a good parent, a parent that breaks the cycles of all the parents we were raised with in the 90s, okay, I do think you need to be 
smarter and better equipped to handle new age children. I would love to raise a child just to see if I would do it a little bit better than my parents a little bit. But at the same time, like my child is not a science experiment, but I am afraid of not breaking generational curses enough to have a child. I'm afraid I'm going to do the things my parents did to me. Look, my parents were not my friends. And they did try to use the wrong methods to reprimand and punish me. It was wrong. And they shouldn't have bullied me. They should have been thoughtful about why there were consequences to my actions. I think my parents did the absolute best. And I'm so here for their good intentions. But without a doubt, like, I've had physical altercations, right? I've had to be the, like, the bottom of a, filter, like, physical altercation, okay? And I don't think that that's reasonable. Now, my friend who's a priest will say things like, we don't punish out of anger. And if you're angry, you've already lost the battle. If you're angry at your kid, if you're petty with your kid, that's never good. He would say, you want to reprimand and guide your children. You want to guide them. And sometimes you have to be harder than softer. But to do it out of anger is to lose. You've already lost. How are you guiding a child to be better if you're punishing them out of anger, hurting them out of anger? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, you want to be like sure of yourself. You want to be firm. You want to be um, um, committed. You want to be, you know, stern. But you want to be, I think, within reason, right? You don't want to be so lax that your kid is just like, like a nothing. You didn't guide them at all. And you don't want to be so rigid that your child has no opportunity to be like a, their own consciousness, you know? Nah. If you're I'm right. I see okay, it no, no, in no, no. your smile. <laughs> Shut up. Let me talk. First. Hold on. Let me actually get to some comments here. Um, cases, toxic behavior, so boring and unproductive, such a waste of time. Jessica says disrespectful is better than calling someone an asshole. Um, fence sitting Brittany. Oh, <gasps> Lakara, how dare you? Um, uh, let's see. Kay says, I think you can get the message across to the kid without jumping in the mud with them to tell them it's a messy behavior. Yeah. You definitely want to live by example, right? Maddox says, as someone that was emotionally stunted at 15 to 25 because of school, school overtook my life. Allowing teens to be teens is imperative, but communication and good relationships makes it easier for sure. For sure, for sure. Maddox says, be firm. No need to be extreme. You have authority. You don't have to power, play, or punish in my perspective. You know how many teachers, cops, parents are bullies? You don't want to bully your kid. But you know that saying, we should bring bullying back? I agree with some of the energy around that like sometimes i love to bully pearl i love to bully sneak i want to bully people all the time but like at the same time i don't want to bully a child sometimes though oh and i've interacted with bratty ass teenagers let me tell you people in my family horrible people in my family even teenagers and honestly it gets to the point that if you have a truly evil child you might just want to get them major therapy but if you're dealing with like a normal rebellious teenager, like just a normal rebellious, a teenager who's not going to stab you, not going to burn the house on fire, you know, just a normal rebellious teenager. I do think if you raise them correctly, you'd be able to reason with them to an extent. But even the most reasonable rebellious child might, might run away for a few days, you know, cause havoc. Maybe have a secret party. Maybe break a lamp. First of all, I don't know because we're not, we're going to, I'm going into this. First of all, I don't appreciate that you hid this well thought out perspective until we are like 15 minutes into the segment as a gotcha. Because that's what it is. You wanted to build me up. And then 15 minutes later, later, drop the ball. I'm like, actually, this would be more effective. If you led with that, it would be more productive. You wanted to go to war on this. So you let me build up. You're trying to shame me. You're doing the same thing that I would have done to the kid. You're trying to shame me and embarrass me in front of people. And I think it's funny, by the way. It's okay. 
But don't pretend like you're this fucking moron. Oh, oh you oh, went right and that's I'm the so, same oh, thing I'm you said in the I'm such a good car. person. I have, hey, listen. Oh, husband, you know, it might be more effective if we sit down with the kid and say, listen, this is entitled behavior, blah, 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 blah. This would be better. You could have led with that. And it would be like, okay, you know what? That's a, that's, that's a good idea. Instead, I see the rage in your eyes as if this is our fucking kid. And I made an authoritative decision without consulting you on some the feelings. way we were going to raise were some our feelings kid. feelings in this. Yeah. Yeah, because we're going to raise our kid. Okay, but we're going to do it together. Are you going to wait till after I punish the kid and then before you express your opinion? Or are you going to say, like, no, let's talk about it? You set me up. I see that you set me up. I didn't set Maybe. you up. You see, set these me are up, motherfucker. At this, I know we're, you're going to cut this Maybe. into segments, but like earlier what? in the Barbie movie, we talked about how women interpret things as your fault. As if it's your fault and you're saying that I gave purpose to my actions. Yes, because I know, don't, don't hide behind being a woman. <laughs> you, I know, oh my God, I love you to death. You are literally everything in the world. Mm -hmm. You are what makes me fear death because I never want to be without you. But you are a petty bitch. What are you talking about? I know you set I'm me up. I'm petty to you. Yeah, you set me up. I didn't You set you. me up. I didn't set you, you up. You set me up a little bit. I really don't think oh, I did. Okay, a little passive aggressive. It's okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> okay, now this is turning like, ha ha ha, we're on stream. I'm actually f***ing angry at you now. Because why? <laughs> so this, am I. This is, this is okay, wait, wait, wait. To be a third party who, again, don't hurt, don't hurt me, don't burn the bridge. It felt a little personal. And it felt a little bit like y'all should maybe talk about this before you have kids, which is fair. But it did sound like a surprise. Like it sounded like she was hearing this for the first time maybe and that he was expressing this for the first time and this is why i do this too with my partner i love reading posts on the internet for what gets people heated and then i go what would you do what would you do and then trust me my partner and i oh my gosh same like we'd be like what did you just say what did you just say like i have had trust me i've had moments with my partner where i'm like you really are just a guy off the internet that i decided to trust aren't you what do you think What's your idea of the world, sir? Trust me, it happens. But good news is that moments like this are great relationship building blocks. You guys always ask me like, um, hold on, I'm trying to move my chat over here. How do you, you know, know your partner's good for you? What, what kind of conversations do you talk about? Take a Reddit post. Am I the asshole? And just do one of these. Just do one of these. Just have the conversation, right? And be like, mm, you think what now? What's, what would you do if we had a kid? I'm just saying, you know what I mean? This is a great opportunity, but it did feel a little personal, but also that makes sense because she's probably thinking in her head, like, oh my God, am I going to make a baby with this person? Trust me. I have this woman thought, maybe don't let me project onto you, girl, if you're watching this. But sometimes I have these like women thoughts where I'm like, can I make a baby with you? And then I get really hesitant because I'm just so like, I'm just so like protective of like my babies. But then I realize like I chose a person who's really good. And they're going to be a good parent. But we should talk about the details if we become parents of what we'd really want to do, right? Of how we'd really want to raise a kid. And so this is just like a great learning opportunity. This is a great conversation to have pre-having kids. So if you guys are in a situation like this where you haven't had kids yet, have these conversations. They're really good conversations to have. This is what I get irritated with. Okay, this is one of the things you do that makes me so good. Okay, okay, okay. You you did this. You do you think I put any thought into like getting a gotcha moment? Yes. No. If that so happens to be what happened, Baby maybe. Love. But I did not put any okay, energy still... into making okay. that happen. But am I right? That's all that matters. It's, I'm right. It, listen. Why didn't you just say this right after I said my first perspective? Because I honestly just thought about it. Oh, so you just didn't even. So the, <laughs> oh, okay. So you. So, so this wasn't even in your head. No, because I was just so caught up so, like, you on didn't people even... being okay. shitty. Okay, okay. Listen, first of all, I think I might agree with that perspective. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Hey, there. If if you're arguing, first, first of all, first of all, you never even thought about a better punishment. No, I'm you're, just you're... so 100 percent against the idea of going and doing the deluxe. I understand. Okay. First of all, though. You know, you didn't have it flushed out. So you were, we, you just happened to be right. That's what it sounds like to me. You yeah. just happened to be right about I this. I knew I was right, but now I found the way right, to be right, absolutely okay, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Right. So it's one of those things where, like, you're just debating. Okay. And you won. Yeah. Okay. So I agree with you. There's probably better and more constructive ways to do this with the kid. So what you're, so here, here's what I would do maybe now. We're not going to get the deluxe thing. We're not going to, you know, be subservient to you. 
um, but you have very entitled behavior and we would operate in a way to criticize that and work forward to change that perspective. <laughs> okay. I still don't think it's the worst thing in the world though to say F we're going to the deluxe hotel and we're going to Disney without you. I still don't think that that's bad. What you're saying is better. It's probably more effective. You know what it is? I will tell, I'll say this. It's not a bad instinctual thought. It would, like, it's not a bad, it, it says that you have, like, a value system that says, like, I don't raise an entitled brat. So I think the initial thought is really good, but we want to make sure, we want to make sure that the first thought isn't our necessary solution thought. So I would argue that the first thought isn't the bad thought, right? Him being like, what the f Cause even I was like, oh, f this kid, bro, them kids. But then you think about it and you're like, okay, hold on. Let me move further my feelings in this. Because trust me, like I said, I, I read parenting stuff all the time with my partner and we are so heated for the first like few minutes of discussion because I'm like, what did you say? What do you say? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? And then we'll talk and I'm like, oh, okay. So you mean this? And then it's like, okay, you know what I mean? But I don't think it's a bad thing to punish your kid for being entitled. No, I, think I don't that think that it's bad to punish Enti Entitled behavior, I think, is one of the worst types of behaviors that your kid can have. And growing up and into an adult, I hate entitled True. people. I would rather True. my kid. Same. Same. Literally same. Cry because we didn't take them to Disney and them not be entitled <sighs> the other way around. Mm. <clears throat> but... By doing the action, like in this person's suggestion, okay. are you just not teaching your child that then when you become a parent, you could be entitled? I think that mm. this gets into a really deep conversation about the way that we punish people in society, where we do uh, empathetic punishments versus um, non-empathetic punishments, where we talked about this in the, in the case of religion, too, where it's like, you have, let's say you have two people engaged, you have two kids, and you took them both out to eat. And the one kid was like screaming and yelling. Well, both kids were screaming and yelling, being obnoxious and throwing food. And you took them home and you told one kid, if they ever do that again, you're going to beat them. Versus you did, you talked to the other kid and you said like, here's why everything you did was really wrong. And then they both corrected their behavior and you say, which one is better off? Yeah. The, your, the, key, the way you would have handled it is better. But then sometimes people <clears throat> don't think about that. You're also, a, I'm not trying to be. I'm sorry. Wasn't her reaction to handling it? Like not thinking anything about uh, of it. Cause I think that's weird. Like, if you didn't think anything of it, I think that's kind of weird. Because if my 15-year-old was like, yeah, I'm not going to go with you unless you get this hotel, I'd be like, oh, that's weird. Why? Why? I thought it was weird that she didn't ask, like, why? Why do you want to do that? What's going on? Like, what are you thinking? I thought that was weird, right? Because her initial reaction was to just be like, yeah, cool. And I'm like, that's not weird to you? That's not like an orange flag a little bit? Like, it's not a little bit sussy? That's interesting, huh? Yeah, but you're a behavioral specialist. Which I think is great. So, like, most people wouldn't come to that perspective. And I don't think it's a, it's fundamentally bad as a parent to be to have a punishment method that would still work even if it's not perfect because sometimes that's the best people might be able to come up with. So if they were like, yeah, you know what, fuck you. You need to learn not to be a, a brat. You're going to stay home. We're going to go out. We're going to have fun. Is it perfect? No. But are they a bad parent? No, I don't think so either. I think that, like, if I, I think that it's more about having the solutions present to you you know what i mean well this is like a tool issue right not all parents have the tools but i do think like one of my goals is to break generational curses and so when i look at the way that my parents handled things i look at all the ways that i didn't like and i didn't think it was efficient and i think well how do i change that in my situation because like kids will drive you crazy some kids they'll make you want to be like oh i wish i didn't have kids <clears throat> But you have to be ready for those moments having a ch having a child. That's why I think I am a little bit. Look, there's one side of me that goes, eh, any way you parent is good enough because, like, you're doing your best. And then there's the way that I would parent with my standards. And, like, it's probably never going to be good enough. And that would be reason enough not to have a kid. And I think that's probably the better choice. Because I think bringing a kid into the world is a big fucking deal. I think forcing a person to existence is a big fucking deal. But if I treat everybody kind of like the eh, monkey that I think they are, then I'm like, eh, fuck it, make another monkey. I don't care.
<clears throat> but if I think you are making the claim that I'm more introspective, I'm like really thoughtful, I'm really aware of what I'm doing, then I think it would be really imperative to do an insane amount of research and to be very thoughtful about having a baby. Like I have some of the <clears throat> best mom and dad callers and they'll sometimes tell me like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm not doing enough. But they are some of the most well-researched, well-rounded, thoughtful people I've ever met. They go so beyond, beyond care for their children that I'm like, oh, if society was even doing 50% of this, the world would be a better place. So it's not that I need perfect because like I said, I think you're going to up your kid no matter what you do. I just think it's about mitigating harm and harm reduction. And again, there's like in a black and white world where there's like two sets of kinds of parents, the parents that are like, eh, you're doing your best. But like, you know, <clears throat> used to chase your kid around with a sandal and hit them until they were black and blue. Or, you know what I mean? You have parents that you know, do the research and do their best and it is what it is. But like, you know, we're all trying our best. Habork said, scared of you versus punishment. I think that that is a great perspective to have. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of healthy fear. There, wh what? No. Okay, now I'm going to put my foot down. You do not want your children to fear you. You want your children to respect you. And you want your children to think highly of you. And I think after raising or watching my parents raise 10 kids and after seeing which boys were afraid of their father versus the boys that were less afraid because my dad got better with age, the boys who are afraid of my dad have problems. The boys who got the cooler dad because my dad raised 10 kids and that means, I've, you know, there's a 20 year span of raising children there. That means I got my parents when they were in their 30s and 40s and 50s ish and my other siblings got them when they were old and tired and cool okay they got a lot more cool parent than i did so the boys that were older and were afraid of my dad because he's a, an intimidating guy okay they have worse relationships with him than the brothers who have better relationships with my dad because my dad chilled okay so again, you don't want to put the fear of God in your children. You want to put the respect by being such a good person that they want to be that good of a person. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so I, I really think fear is not the good word. It's a, a, like punishment and fear. No, we want respect and doing right by that respect. Trusting your dad enough, your mom enough, to like know they have the best intentions. <clears throat> I'm losing my fucking voice. And that they're a reason, right? Um, sorry, oh my God. That they're like so honorable you want to emulate that. You know what I mean? Medic says I never feared my dad. But when he hit me that one time, I was like, oh, this is a major fuck up. Oh, I fucked up because it was such a contrast, especially after I had been warned beforehand. Ah, Fear is a no-no word. Fear is the mind killer. Boom, 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 boom. What? You should. I'm afraid of my mother. <clears throat> I love my. Maybe he's using fear in a different way. I'm not afraid of my parents. Um, I'm not. I'm personally not afraid of my parents. I'm. I'm on the other side of it where like you're never good enough. So you're always like seeking approval from your parents. But then my rebellious nature squashes it down and I still just do what I want with my life. But that is my issue. I borderline, right? So I'm always like I feel rejected because like my parents rejected me my whole life. Um, to this day, I still need to be a better woman. But like it is one of those things where I think, again, seeing the siblings who do fear. Like, you know what I mean? It manifests in different ways. Sometimes it manifests in um, addiction, gluttony, uh, self-harm, um, laziness, uh, perceived laziness. Sometimes the fear manifests in uh, singlehood, um, rejection of people, isolation. It just, you know what I mean? It doesn't usually pan out very well. But some people do kind of get through life 
being fine with it. I know I meet tons of people who are like, yeah, my dad used to beat me with a stick. But like, you know, I'm more of a man now. Okay. I don't believe people when they say that in leave some residual issue. I just don't. Mother. I'm afraid of her too. Yeah, well, okay. Well, it's a... <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. It's effective. It's effective. I'm not saying that. She, I'm not petrified of my mother. She's a very good woman. She's very good to me. But there's also a help. I wouldn't want to be on her wrong side. Yeah, exactly. Well, there you go. Did it work? <laughs> okay, so I agree with you. Your method is better, but I don't think you're a bad person for going into a different way. Hold on. Let me just. I could just do this. Uh, Luminati says healthy fear is just slang for give kids pause to run their mouths or do harmful things, not fear of aggression. Mm. I don't think kids know a difference. My farm brother is very intimidating looking. He's very strong. And one time, again, he was trying to put the fear of God in the kids. And I was like, stop it. I go, you're going to give your kids pee problems. You're going to give your kids urination problems in the middle of the night. Just like some of my siblings had problems with growing up. I was like, you are forgetting how intimidating you look. You have no idea what a six, a five, a four, a 15-year-old looks at when they see you. You have no fucking clue how scary you look stop it and so he stopped but it was one of those things again <laughs> okay you don't think much of it and your kids might never tell you about it and you might wonder why do your kids suck at school why do they pee their pants why are they having problems why are they having night terrors the one person who's supposed to be there to protect them the one person who's supposed to love them more than anything the one person who's supposed to be scary to the rest of the world but not to them is the same person that puts the fear of God in them, which is why people even have a bad relationship with God himself. The same God that says he's gonna love me and I'm his child is the same one who blew up my village. Sodom and Gomorrah. I still wanna look at the rest of them. Yeah, we are, we are, we are. Okay, you're suggesting, I like that, like, this is the second time on the stream today that I got mad at you. When was the first time? I don't know, I was getting very sensitive during the Barbie segment. Yeah, and then I didn't have a good argument, so that's why I didn't. I was not very invested. But anyways, I get that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I enjoy. No, I it. could tell that you were getting <sighs> angry, and it was something I didn't care about. So Listen, when... I get what you're saying. It's okay to be angry. I I think I processed it well, though. I didn't yell. Okay. Anyway, whatever. Wait, you're suggesting deluxe and leaving him in home sheets. You guys are brutal. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> guess he's not going then. Is this a joke? Uh, it has to be a joke, right? I mean, who gives a 15-year-old veto power on a trip that he's not paying for? A 15-year-old is a child. Book what you want and either leave him home or make him go. I'd definitely leave him home with an adult and list of chores. This is what I'm too. saying, but though I feel like these are people who like get off on being in like an authoritative role as like like over children. What do you mean get off to it? Like they want to punish their kids? Yes. Maybe. Like I I don't know. I just get like a weird vibe. I like, I'm very excited to become a mom. So again, I agree with this premise. Like I agree with her, like distrust of it. Because again, are you having a really well worded conversation with your child? Or are you just going to punish them with no real explanation of what's happening? Right? Like, I think that's something to be considered. Mother, I'm very excited to like be responsible for like teaching little people that are going to grow up to be big people yeah. and be like positive impacts in the world yeah. and i think that things are supposed to be like mm, okay hold on harmony says i always trusted and respected my parents but being a little scared of my parents uh being a little scared of my parents definitely kept me from doing a lot of stupid things okay so i will tell you i, I think i understand again when you respect someone enough i think you are afraid of disappointing them which is fear in of itself. And I will say that with my nieces and nephews, like I have had moments where I'm like angry at them and I'm like, I'll just look at them and they're like, like, I feel like I need to look. And yes, have I spanked my nieces and nephews? Absolutely. When they were really young babies, like the two fingers like spank, absolutely. Um, and it was one of those things where I would tell them, like they were too young to communicate. Like I always do the two finger spank. Like you just, dude, you take a baby and you're like, don't ever do that again. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, they will, their the whole soul is crushed in two seconds by just like looking at them and doing the, and they're like, like literally they're dead. Okay. So I have definitely been the auntie that is like definitely respected. Well, also we raise our kids that way, right? Like, okay. 
But it's one of those things where I usually feel like if you build up enough of a respect or slight fear, but the fear is like out of respect, then what you get is like a, what did you say? Auntie Brittany didn't hear you. Can you repeat that? And they'll be like, I mean, even my partner has literally said, he's like, man, I'm kind of afraid of you sometimes. Like, <laughs> But that's just because I got that. Okay. I could put the fear of God with a look. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. You don't even have to hit your kids. Just look at them. Just look at them. In church, my dad didn't have to hit us in church. He would just do this. And he would like, look at us. Sorry. Sorry. He'd go like this. And he would look at us and he'd be like, <clears throat> my mom used to take us to Costco every day or every weekend after church. They stopped doing that eventually because they don't spend money on Sundays anymore. But they would literally like, we'd all walk like a duck, like a duck line. And my mom and, you know, oh, how do you keep your kids so in line? I'm like, mm. Because they put the fucking, put the fear of God in us. But also, it, it, I understand. I, there's something to be said about, I'm afraid to get hit, so I won't do this. But let me tell you about something that happened later in life. Later in life, because it worked temporarily, I'll give you that. It got to the point where my siblings and I would have a competition of when we got in trouble, who would show the least amount of weakness when getting hit. So amongst the siblings, it would become a contest of like, oop, dad's going to beat us. Okay. Like dad's going to hit us. I should say hit us because beat us sounds like we were like the shameless family or something. Oh, but he didn't really think Frank didn't beat his kids. Anyways, th 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 I'm tired. So my siblings and I would be like, mm, go ahead, bitch, show fear. Go ahead, bitch. I'm going to go show fear. And my dad would hit us. And whoever didn't show fear the most got a gold star, you know. And the boys got hit, or, hit more than the girls. And the boys got hit harder than the girls. But there were, like, definitely moments where it went from just, like, putting the fear of God in your kids and having problems from night terrors to peeing in their pants till they were quite old, right? Having issues with relationships in the future. Having issues with so many problems socializing. All the way to, um, you know, just like not trusting them and wondering like, hey, like I want to come to you with my problems, but you freak out every time. And by the way, freaking out when your kids come to you with problems is also a part of it. I always ask myself, okay, if I have a kid, what are they going to come to me with that's going to freak me out? Because honestly, like I'm like ready for my kid to be like, hey, I want to have sex at 12. I'm like, okay, let's talk about how we've just had our period. And so I get it. Like I was a horny 12 year old, but. Let's talk about why like sex at 12 isn't reasonable. And then when they come to me at 15, they're like, hey, I want to have sex. I'm like, okay, let's talk about what that means, <laughs> right? And then they come to me at 17 and 16 and 18 and 20 and 19. I want them to be like, okay, like, okay, safe. So I want them to be able to come to me. Things I could never have done with my parents, right? No matter what, you're going to fail somewhere as a parent. But let's harm reduce. By getting ready preemptively with conversations like this to say to ourselves, okay, what do we do when our kid does this? What do we do when this happens? What's our values? What do our values say? What kind of an adult are we trying to raise? What kind of an adult are we trying to raise? Conversations. Okay. And I know that like <laughs> as an adult, like I will, will have, or as the parent, I will have authority over some things or authority over <laughs> many things, but like... I don't know. I get like a sense of like better than because I'm the parent. Okay, okay. Do you know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, okay. It sounds like what you're saying to me Fair. is listen, as a parent, I understand that I am an authority figure over my child. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for their well being and I'm responsible mm -hmm. for them being good people. And mm -hmm. I need to teach mm -hmm. them those things. And so you feel like if the, pa the person's first thought is a, is a harsh punishment, that that there's a part of the parent that actually engages in a power fantasy mm -hmm. to almost be oppressive over their you've seen it you've seen it with family i've seen it in families i've absolutely seen it with families kid in a way where that behavior i will say from my parents perspective i don't think that was what was happening i think they were genuinely unsure how to handle 10 kids and mostly rebellious opinionated children and i think well mostly i should i shouldn't say mostly but like enough and i do think that um in my parent parental dynamics i don't think they were trying to get the leg up but i have seen those families they're really toxic they're like in competition with their kids like 
the moms are in competition with the daughters and the dads are in competition with the sons. It's really weird. Behavior will be taught down to their kid and et cetera and et cetera down the line. And it's a non-constructive behavior to engage in to make somebody the best. Ooh, Ozzy, 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 did I just, sorry, did I just, met, like, by proxy accidentally, like, mention your family without realizing it? Were you that kind of dynamic? You said, my father definitely tried to put the fear in my siblings and I, to the point where he even tried to fight my sister multiple times when she was a teenager because she was never intimidated by him. Is that, like, what I just described? Like, those families who, like, fight their kids, like, they're in competition with their kids even? <clears throat> version of themselves that they could be. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, I get that. That makes sense to me. Or it's like, oh, like, I'm, like, an asshole. I'm just, like, I look at these things, and I'm like, oh, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, your kids don't come home for the holidays once they find a partner. Like, that's what I look at. I mean, to be fair, you can be a really well-intentioned parent, but your kids might not come home because you just have, like, a difference of political opinion. To be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, my partner and I are always talking about, like, what do we want to do about holidays? What do we want to do about I'm living like I'm going to hopefully live in Europe for a really long time. My goal is to live here for like a long time. So what's the plan? When do we ever see my my family? My brother just had a baby. When am I going to meet the baby? Like when are we going to go home to America? You know, when is that going to be a thing? And I think we're probably going to skip holidays and we're probably going to go for summer vacay more so like something or winter vacay, I should say something like maybe not around the holidays because my family's so religious and it would be maybe exhausting to do it, but maybe, but we're talking about it. We're like, I don't want to go home to my parents' house during like super holidays. I'm going to be real, like religious holidays. I do not want to put my partner through that. I don't want to go to church. So I don't think that time, but like in the summer, maybe, or in the like winter before, maybe for Thanksgiving, maybe for Thanksgiving, flights are cheap as like, that could be great. But like, we're talking about that now. Because again, it's like, what kind of lifestyle do we want? What kind of relationship do we want? And even if we had kids, same thing. I don't want my kids to have religion shoved down their throat. And they will, even when we don't go on the holidays. So. Okay. I understand what you're saying. You know? And I, I don't want to be. I think. I, I don't th find that to be the best parent. No. I think that you have. Because it sounds like what you're saying is you think that some of these people might be looking for problems in their kid. <clears throat> like they want their kid to have a problem with them so they can punish them. Like you're saying that it could be a slippery slope to the parents almost potentially setting them up sometimes to be overly aggressive or assertive in their in their punishments. No, I don't think as much that. I just think that like this this one well, like has enjoy, a lot it, well, of like negative energy that it's like whoa. Mm. Yeah. Like okay. it happens. Well, did you, you need... did you comment and say hey I think this is the best? No, way. because the moderator turned off commenting for the post. Uh -huh. I was going to comment and I'm be on and say something like wow like all you guys sound like real big pieces of shit. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Probably not constructive, but okay. All right, the Girl. next one. <clears throat> when he's paying for it, he can choose where to stay. He's more than welcome to put his input in and have an opinion, but exclude, depending on a deluxe resort he, or not, he's just disrespectful. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Sounds like he's going to, for grandmas for a while, while you go, the happiest place on earth. Remind him who his, the parents are. That's what I'm saying. The happiest place on earth. Apparently, his is not Disney, and that's okay. Okay. It's possible. We're, Maybe. It's possible. Maybe. That's Disney, but don't let him go to that either, because, mm -hmm. okay, gotcha. All right. Mm. I think this is the last one. Uh, he's not paying, so he doesn't get to go decide. Oh, well, you're the parent. I'm not saying <clears throat> I'm not talking, taking what talking you into going because if we're going on a family trip, you're going. End of story. Right. LOL. Yes. I think that's fair, too. Mm. Uh, Illuminati. Illuminati says, how did you e how did they even raise a kid that would expect them to respond to an ultimatum? That's the question. That's why it was giving off entitled at first, because we were like, I'm sorry, ma'am. That's a great question. Like, oh, no, I'm going to take you. That's also a fair response. Be like, you're going to come regardless of what you think, and you're just going to stay in the non-deluxe resort. See, I don't, I'm not, like, argumentative over this point, but I don't necessarily agree with that. Because, like, if you really don't want to come, don't come on my trip and ruin it. Yeah, you true. You could stay. I, so I, true. You do not want a bitchy teenager, bro. I disagree, because I think that this is also, this is probably better than the original perspective I had of, like, stay home. It's a, listen, listen, kids are annoying. You have to teach kids family values. If they decide to say, like, no, you're going to come regardless, that's fine. As long as you don't beat the kid while they're going and be rude to them. They're like, no, you're going to come. It's a family trip. You need to learn family. I needed to learn family. I used to hate my family for no reason. My mother drilled into my head that, like, family is family, and now family is very important to me. Like, that's a socialized behavior. And then saying, no, you're going to come regardless. It wasn't a choice for you. You're a silly little boy. You know, uh, that's fair. Maybe don't call him a silly little boy, but you get my point. 
that's fair. That's fair to be like, no, this is a family thing. Like, family is very important. You're coming and you don't have a choice. Because sometimes you need to tell your kids they don't have a choice when they do things. Because, you know, like, you know, you, like when it comes to eating food, you don't have a choice. You're eating decent food. You're not going to eat shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you have to sometimes assert that. Yeah, it's like, what's the vibe? It's funny. My parents, you know, you ate what you got. My mom made home cooked meals my whole life. And we were really lucky. And we still do that. Like, I love to cook. My partner cooks. It's really nice. Um, and it is one of those things where you did get what was put in front of you. But then I remember my youngest brother. And maybe my parents were just tired at this point. My youngest brother went through a phase where, like, he wouldn't eat anything but calamari. Fried calamari. So anytime we went to a restaurant, fried calamari. Anytime we were at home and they had it accessible, fried calamari. Like, he just went through the pickiest stage of his life for some time. And all of us would just watch him. And I'm like, why are you just eating calamari? And he's like, that's all I want. And I was like, and my mom was like, Ugh, at least he's eating. And I was like, okay. But, like, when I was growing up, like, absolutely not. And to be fair, like, eh, none of us cared because he was the youngest. And we're like, okay. Being the youngest of 10 is weird, bro. It's weird. But let me tell you, um... I didn't mind that growing up. Like, but to be fair, my mom and dad are literally bomb cooks, bro. Like, my mom and dad are so good at, like, they're so good with food. Like, it felt like we were at a restaurant every night of our lives. Like, I'm not even going to play. My mom let us have sugar cereal in the morning before school, homeschooling school. Like, we got one bowl of sugar, just sugar cereal. My bestie wasn't even allowed to have frosted mini wheats. She just had wheats. So sad. My mom and dad at least gave us sugar cereal. We were spoiled. And then we could have like home cooked meals all day. My dad would make the bomb ass barbecue. Like we were so mm, mm, homemade dumplings. My parents were so good with food. Like you wanted to eat at home. But it is one of those things where like sometimes when the vibe shifts in a family, sometimes getting exactly what you want for dinner is within reason. And then sometimes you eat what you get. Okay. You're coming whether you like it or not. That's final. And you're going to enjoy yourself and you're not going to be miserable. Because then you do that. Be like, you're coming, you're going to stay in here and you're not going to act miserable. And then, because then I'll kick your, then I'll smack, I'll smack your ass. Okay. Then I'll kick your, you know, you're not going to ruin this for me. So you're going to come, you're going to enjoy it because we're going to do nice things with you. We're mm -hmm. not going to bring you and then like put you on a leash and drag you behind a car. We're going to do nice things with you and you're going to enjoy it and you're not going to be a miserable fuck. Some people, that we know could benefit from that type of punishment. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who need to learn to not be miserable because you want to know what everybody's miserable and a lot everybody has everybody's miserable sometimes and sometimes you're miserable at the worst possible moment. But the reality is, is just because you feel miserable doesn't give you the entitlement to display that and project that onto everybody else and act like a total because you're not getting what you want. And Amen. No, no, no. This is fair. When you've actually had to deal with somebody who's just like the worst Debbie Downer, I get it. I understand where this passion is coming from. And that's the behavior kids need to learn. <clears throat> I don't wanna go, I don't, who, fuck you, who are you? You're a 15 year old child. This is a family outing, you're coming to the family outing. Mm. I hear you on that one. Okay. Cause I'm telling you that is something that I'm gonna reinforce in our kids. I'm like okay if they're saying that. we're not going to grandma's, yes you are, you don't have a choice. You know, it's interesting, too, because, like, depending on the vibe, my siblings and I, that was, like, our favorite thing every weekend was to go to our cousin's house because we'd go every weekend. We'd go hang out with the aunties and uncles and all the cousins, and it was, like, 30, 40 of us, you know, just running around everywhere. It was my whole childhood. I was really lucky, even though the family broke up, and, of course, we don't talk to the dad side of the family anymore. What is up with those TikToks being so accurate? I don't – we don't talk to my dad side anymore. Like, not really, like, bullshit happened, drama, bullshit. Isn't that insane? Like, it's so weird. We grew up with these people my whole f***ing life. And then we all just kind of became different. To be fair, a lot of us became a lot more progressive and some stayed conservative and it got a little weird with politics. But yeah, like, we don't hang out anymore. But man, I grew up my whole life with my cousins. My mom's side and I are still cool as far as I know. Everybody be chilling. I got good cousins on my mom's side I still hang out with and I love them. But like, legit though, just so interesting. Like family dynamics, going to grandma, grandpa. I also loved my grandparents growing up. So like I loved seeing them. I loved hanging out. I was in the summertime when we were kids, we got to spend a week at grandma and grandpa's house. It was like the biggest deal ever because we got to go away for like a week. They had two acres of like land in a winery. It was bomb. Like they bought it years ago, like for like 
cheap ass cheap ass you know and now the place is like wealthy but and god rest their souls they're both dead but like we would literally spend like a week there and it was the best do you guys know what biryani is my grandma made that for me every time because that's my favorite and my grandma would make the most delicious biryani ever in the whole world and she knew i was coming over and she would make it for me without raisins or raisins on the side because i was a little icked out by the raisins <sighs> i miss you nana she was so wonderful she was the great she was my dad's mom this woman could cook this woman god bless her cook cook beautiful you're mm. coming and you're going to enjoy yourself Mm. I don't want. Okay, I, I okay. I, I don't want to have to piss constantly, but I'm diabetic. That's life. <laughs> it's just what you have to do. What you have to do. You grow up. That I think. That I think is fair. Fair. See, look at that. We, boom. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Is um, that it? Almost. Uh, I may let my kids voice their opinions or their wants, but at the end of the day, I'm the parent. They aren't. I would never let any kid of age tell me what we are or aren't going to do or where we're going to stay. True. I think that there's there's cause for conversation from your kid. If he wants to express, hey, I'd prefer to go here. It would make me happier. Then we can have a conversation. Hey, I would rather stay in a better resort. Discord said, you're going to Disney and you're going to like it. <laughs> and then Sam. Sometimes your kids don't want to do fun sh bros. Sometimes that's how it is. Like another thing, you know, maybe more comfortable. There'd be more room. I don't want to stay in the thing with my six-year-old, uh, you know, daughter, Oop, my uh, bad. sister. You know, she's annoying. And I would interpret that as like, you're 15 now. Six, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're 15. I get it. You know what? That's fun. Maybe you get them their own, you know, room or something. I don't know. You know the six-year-old throw them in like a basket or something. <laughs> uh, right, I'm so confused. LOL, like, sure, I might say, hey, where do you guys want to go? What do you want to do for vacation? But telling me you're not going to go somewhere unless it's super expensive is insane, ungrateful, and disrespectful. I agree mm. with that. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, any, any final thoughts? I think that that was a good fight. We had a very good fight. That was a real fight. If you that was a great conversation. Like, y'all got to have these conversations in your relationships. They're 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 mar they're deal breakers for some people. You guys, that was a real. <laughs> didn't fight. catch that. That was a we just actually fought on stream. Yeah, um, I but love it was that. a good fight. I'm honored because you want to know what this was a fight we needed to have because True. we're gonna be in a similar situation. Oh, also <clears throat> interesting that they describe this as a fight because my partner and I have been discussing this. Like, do we have fights yet? I think a fight is this is Brady's definition. A fight is when you have refused to acknowledge your partner's feelings, you refuse to engage in the conversation, and you neglect the relationship. That's what I think a fight is. So I would call this a disagreement slash argument or conversation that has a disagreement. But I think it's interesting that they call it a fight. And I would maybe I should call Papa Gut when I'm live next and talk to him about this. But like, I don't describe this as a fight. So, like, my partner and I will have arguments like this. And he's like, is that a fight? And I was like, no. Because we stayed. We had the conversation. And we communicated. And even if we had to walk away for a second, it's still a communication. So, for me, a fight, because I used to have fights with my ex-partners. We would, like, neglect each other for three to four days. Go to, like, a hotel. Go to other partners' houses. Like, we were fighting. So, like, for me, I think a fighting is, like, toxic. But this just seemed like a nice disagreement slash conversation, which is very normal. And after much discussion, you get to see where the other person is at and have a great, like, coming together in the end. So I don't know if I would call I wouldn't qualify this as a fight in Britney world, but I like that to know that this is considered a fight in their world. Situation when we have kids. Yeah. And I think one of the most important things that people need to do is have constructive conversations. That was really <clears throat> I mean, that was our that was one of our fights. Other people fight much worse. Like, if we weren't on stream talking about this, it would have been pretty much the same. Yeah, I just would have probably, like, stood up. And, like, like, and, like, you, you would have went, like, you're a f***ing idiot. <laughs> yeah. What do you, no, you know, you wouldn't say that. You say, what are you f***ing talking about? <laughs> yeah. I do that. I, like, twist off the bed. I'll, like, stand up in the room. I'm like, what? What do you mean? I, like, move. Like, yeah, I get it. No, I get it. When you, like, when you can move around. I move around. I'm, like, a pacer, too. I'm like, what does this even mean? Can we clarify, please? Like, I'm, oh, I get so gay. I'm like, what? Yes. <laughs> what the f are you talking hey, what about? What are you talking about? And I was. I love her. I love her accent. What are you talking about? Are you? And I say, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> I say, Jesus fuck, are you just like, what, what? And then we would do like that. It would just be louder. Yeah. And more cursing. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you too. That was a good constructive fight because we're gonna have situations like that when we have kids, uh, where our kids gonna act True. like an entitled.
and we're gonna have to solve it. And we we do have we've so we talked about things. We mostly are on the same page with how we want to raise our kid, but there's gonna be some <sighs> stuff where of we're gonna course. have a little bit of turbulence. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, yeah, yeah. So cool. I like that segment. That was fun. That was stimulating. Great combo. That was a good segment. That was fun. great combo. We loved it. Oh, fun. That was a fun fight. Fun. I don't want to yes. cut off. That was a fun fight. Look at how happy we are after we fought. Mm -hmm. uh, Ew, gross, gay. Uh, I do have one it. extra bit of info to Just add. Just kidding, to we that. love it. Okay, I don't on. have a screenshot, but the mom said in one of the comments that one of the reasons he requested to go to a deluxe resort is because there would be more hot girls by the pool. Oh! Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Did my partner say that? That maybe he just wants to hang out with some people his own age? Oh, well, that's that. But you see, so that's what? what I'm talking about. You're hiding information from me. Let's if go. If my young 15-year-old son said, Dad, I would like to go to a deluxe resort, and one of the reasons is to see some tits. I, we're going to the deluxe resort. I'm not even saying we're going to go to the deluxe resort, but the behavior is no longer entitled. See? I remember being a 15-year-old horny kid, and I would be like, Okay, you know what? I, I, we can't afford it, and you're coming regardless, but you're not actually going to come because we're not going to the fucking deluxe resort. <laughs> <laughs> that yes. would be much more understanding of that. See? Because, I mean, that's not entitled. That's just like, I'm horny. I'm a yes. young man going through shit. And I'd be like, all right, I get that. Mm -hmm. That's not entitled behavior. Yo, honestly, though, like, can I tell you, as a teenager, tell me that's not like a, like a, like a TV show, like I went to the Disneyland Resort, had met my summer girlfriend there. Like that'd be kind of cool, like to meet your friends or to, that. See, this is this is information that we needed to know. Anymore, that's just the kid wanting to fucking look at girls' boobies. So the girls' boobs, maybe even hit on the girl his age or something. There's no relatable. Boob. That's my boy. Good job. You're not gay. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. As he's wearing his love shirt. I was just joking. Um, why did you hide that information? Because then we wouldn't have fought. Oh, <laughs> listen, listen to me. See, she did orchestrate right it. Right now, mother. Listen to me right now. Okay. In that segment, what did I say? My wife is trying to set me up. And, and hold on. True. I'm happy we had the fight, by the way. True. It was constructive for the content. Would you have done that if we weren't online? <clears throat> yes, because for me, it's still, it's looking at the other parents response you're talking more about like what if the situation was as bad as i thought mm. yeah like and, i'm okay i'm looking more it. at the parents response that are like that's just a kid and i'm a parent and what i say go just double jerking off with yeah them. that's how i hear them that's how i um, see them but i but i did i did you did set me up in a way totally. that i agree with i understand because we needed to have the fundamental conversation and i totally True. understand that. that's something very constructive but it's good to know. This is like exactly, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why we needed to know exactly, well, why? Why do you need to go to the resort? And honestly, fair. And necessary for people to do, uh, especially if they want to have kids together or if they do have kids. We need to have those conversations. But I was right. You did set me up. Just on that You part, did set me up. No, because I would have like, oh, okay, I get it. That was yeah. good. That because was good then ending. you're dispelling to me, like, that. it's not an entitlement hey. thing. It's because he wants to look at boobs. Who doesn't love boobs? Okay, peep deeps that was it. Thank you so much for watching this with me. Guys, this is what I'm saying. Ask your kids why. That's a perfectly decent reason. Let me tell you. That is a perfectly decent reason. Okay? We love it. We love it. This is like what I think is so important in relationships, though, is to have these kinds of conversations. That's why I love the Reddit Am I the Asshole? Because you like, I literally save them. My partner and I save them for each other. And then we sit in bed. We're like, listen to this one. Thoughts? Listen to this one. Thoughts? I know some people were like, what, Brittany, if the the uh, the Reddit stories are AI generated, why are we listening to them? Well, first of all, I don't know if they are all generated, okay? But even if they are, they're great little like, what would you do situations? And so for me, like this is a, just an, like a an opportunity to know your partner more, to know yourself more. Like you want to talk about introspection? Have a moment to ask yourself these questions and then come to your, your conclusions. Like, look, I'm a judgmental person. I know what I like. I know what I don't like, right? You do you, me do me, okay? Okay? But I usually ask myself, why did I decide to do it this way? Why did I bring myself to this conclusion? Why do I have this opinion? Why am I this black and white? Why am I judgmental about this thing, right? That's the point. The nuance isn't supposed to exist to allow, like, everything to
to sort of be allowed by you. You're allowed to have boundaries and be nuanced. You're allowed to say, hey, I get why you do that, but like, I think it's shitty. And also like you do you, right? But you wouldn't know those things unless you asked yourself or waited until you were in a situation to have to deal with it. So put yourself in those situations by proxy of stories on the internet so you can give yourself an opportunity to ask yourself those questions. Great video. Glad Papa Gut recommended that I watch it. Thank you, Robin and Dan. Thank you, Robin and Dan. We love your energy. We're here for it. We love a happy heterosexual couple on the internet. So rare. We love a minority. We love them. White heterosexual love. We love it. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Dun, 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 dun.